Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for iOS Today is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. The best ways to get text into your iPhone or your iPad. And I say, go! World Cup app's coming up. <laughs> On iOS Today. <laughs> iOS Today is brought to you by Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans. Introducing Rate Shield Approval. If you're in the market to buy a home, Rate Shield Approval locks up your rate for up to 90 days while you shop. It's a real game changer. Learn more and get started at rocketmortgage.com slash iOS today. <laughs> iOS today time where we talk about iOS, iPad, iPhone, Apple Watch, Apple TV. And that beautiful beaded horn. It's a Vuvuzela from the 2010 World Cup. That I uh, that I resurrected. It was brought to us by a fan. Thank you. Uh, beautiful. It was actually at the South African World Cup. You remember that was the one where people were blowing those horns. Mm -hmm. It was such a nightmare that they actually created software to cut the sound of a vuvuzela out of the broadcast because it was just the whole time. And then in the 2014 World Cup, they banned them. Mm -hmm. But I'm ready to bring them back. Bring back the vuvuzela. No, don't put your ear up to that. <laughs> trust me. I do trust you. See how much I trusted you there. <laughs> That's a quiet one. Remember that? Yeah. That this the sound of thousands of vuvuzelas screaming screaming out in pain mm -hmm. and then suddenly silenced. Remember that? That's joy, not pain. Uh happy World Cup. It's we're in the uh, we're in the quarterfinals. We are. The knockout round. It's exciting. Well, we aren't. But we're here doing the show. <laughs> uh, you know, I tried out and they said, you're just too good. Mm -hmm. We don't want to really unbalance the teams that dramatically. Mm -hmm. So today we are going to talk about keyboards. Yes. <laughs> it has nothing to do with. No. No. But we are going to talk about them. And you do. You mean uh, physical as well as software. Software and hardware keyboards. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so I need to start, of course, with my favorite keyboard, which is a software keyboard. And that is the Bitmoji keyboard. You use that an awful lot. I use it just enough, I think. <laughs> Bitmoji, of course, is, you know, I've created a cartoon of myself. Unless you've, if you no, don't follow me on Twitter, then uh, you might not have seen. I, I, I adjust my Bitmoji to the current fashions, my hairstyles. That's smart. And I saw a Bitmoji on TV yesterday. I can't remember what show it was. Oh, oh, you know what I bet it was? What? Was it Barry? Yes, There's it was Barry. Barry. There was a Bitmoji and Barry. Thank you for reminding I, me. It was a Goran, great moment. Goran, the, uh, the uh, uh, Chechen gangster, actually it was his sidekick, his henchman, the one without the eyebrows, yeah. made a Bitmoji of himself. And what did he, and it said something not good. I it was can't something what he, about like the, the, some hit that they yeah, were doing. Yeah, and yeah, it, it was, was pretty like, funny. Too bad. That was a Bitmoji, wasn't it? <laughs> yes. I thought it was. Yeah. So, wow. uh, like all uh, Russian gangsters, I too use the Bitmoji keyboard. You have to love them. They're so cute. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, here, uh, if I want to type something to you, um, I could use a, a, a GIF or a GIF, or I could, here's, you know, Here's just the keyboard right here. So you know how to adjust the keyboard. You press the little world. So I have my G board and then I um, have these all these different keyboards. What happened to my a Bitmoji keyboard? Okay, so here it is. If I want to um, say uh, if I'm happy, which I often am. <laughs> Somebody's made a t-shirt out of the Berry Bitmoji. Oh, that was the Berry, yeah. Show yeah. the Berry Bitmoji. Yeah, this is on my screen, the Berry Bitmoji. Gulp. <laughs> I need that shirt. For sure. <laughs> um, well, let's see if I, I can do the gulp for me. Um, there is a gulp, right? That's yeah, a that's gulp. a standard Bitmoji. Um, so here's my gulp, and then I can send that in text. Or I, I can... get those from Megan all the time. And you love them, don't you? I love them. <laughs> I actually think Bitmojis are even better, probably than uh, Memojis or Wemojis or whatever the hell they call them. Memojis. Memojis. Because I, I really think that they're fun and funny, but they don't, they're not, the problem with Apple's uh, emo, uh, what, what do they call them? 
Memojis. Memojis. But there's the Memoji, which is me, and then there's the other ones. The we oh, Animojis. Animojis. Is they're really, they're, they're, they consume a lot of attention. They require you to listen and watch for seconds at a time. I just, you know, I don't really want to engage that much with a text stream. I just want to see it and move on. Right. Like, you don't want to have to listen to me talk. You listen to me talk enough. You don't. I don't listen to you talk, so as you well know. <laughs> that's true. But if I did, I would have had enough by now. No, no, I just feel like that's, it's it, it's more, it's like a attention seeking, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas a Bitmoji just, it says it, it gets the emotion out there, it does it. It's wonderful. Yeah, I think I think so too. Um, I, yeah, I don't, I always love it when people send them to me. So I would hope that when people, um, when I send them to people, they don't and they don't like them, they could let me know. Right. Um, it's no more than, no, it doesn't take any more time than just, it's yeah. It's based on your message. picture too, right? Or yeah, no? I mean, you can make it whatever you, no, it's not. You just, you choose what you want it oh, to look okay. like. So you okay. can, you know, make your notes. I thought in Snapchat I, it could use a picture of me to start, but maybe, maybe I'm mistaken. Maybe, yeah, Sna Snapchat owns them. Yeah. Um, yeah, so. I have, I use, I use Snapchat bit more, Jesus. Yeah. And once you have the keyboard, you can use it anywhere. Mm -hmm. In everything, in mm -hmm. your business correspondence. Yes. Everywhere. Yeah, Gmail, whatever. <laughs> like on your resume, if you happen to be looking for a job, then. You know, I, should, I, I guess I should show, we should show people how easy it is to change keyboards, right? Because yeah. uh, Apple, this was something that was relatively recently added to Apple. So and actually, this is a bad example because notice I'm using a physical keyboard. So mm -hmm. I'm going to detach this. Okay. Now the physical keyboard works. And uh, you see right down here. There's this key in the lower left. And for me, it's just showing an, um, an emoji mm -hmm. because for me, I don't have any third-party keyboards installed. So all I can do is switch back and forth between emojis and the Apple keyboard. But if you install third-party keyboards, and you can see here, by going to keyboard settings and look at the keyboards you have, you can add new keyboards. And that's where you could add, for instance, the Bitmoji keyboard. Having added that, now I can go back to reminders. Well, you might have to also give it full access. I'm I may. We'll it, see. Yeah. So notice this has shifted from an emoji icon to a globe, which means now I can switch between emoji, bitmoji, and regular. So as you add keyboards, that will allow you to quickly mm -hmm. switch between keyboards. So I have, this is, this is me. Yeah. Um, let me see if I can find Gulp. I'm going to write you a little... A little note says, you Goron to... wants to see you. <laughs> Gulp. I do hear about the whatever. Now, yeah, it's so con this is a pain. It should just type it, but yeah. you have to paste it in. And you might have to give it full access, too. Maybe I haven't haven't done that yet. Good morning. Love you. Hi. These are a few you can And you just... could search for anything. I, yeah. just, I searched for Gulp. These are, oh, yeah. So it has a lot, doesn't it? It has so, it really has every emotion. And may, it often has more uh, bitmojis than for like maybe three it's or four. It's leg for... day. <laughs> Apparently, you cannot paste bitmojis into reminders, which is really would be nice to be able. I to... was able to post them into notes. That's interesting. Yeah, it would be nice to have a leg day bitmoji. Well, the... anyway, that's just the brief uh, rundown of how you could add a, a keyboard. Right. You have to download it first. Once it's downloaded, it'll show up in the keyboard's settings. And then you can say add it, and then once it's added, you can switch using that little but button. But sometimes you do need to give it full access. So um, if you go to keyboards, um, and then so like oh, I see what you're saying. You could do that in the key. To, yeah. yeah, give it full. Yeah, so saying, I had allowed oh, full access, so I don't know what's going on there because I'd used it before. What, you notice that I have a lot of keyboards. I don't always, I don't have them installed often, and I think that that's uh, because I don't. Sometimes I just want the simple stuff. I don't mm -hmm. want to have. All of the, and sometimes they sh different ones show up and stuff. There's some really good ones mm -hmm. out there. I actually am a fan of the Google keyboard. They call it Gboard. Let's make sure I have. See, I didn't allow full access yet. Now allow it. And when you do that, by the way, Apple will gently remind you. Oh my God, you really don't want to do this. Full access allows the developer of this keyboard to transmit anything. Whoops, let's do it again. Anything you type, including things you've previously typed with this keyboard. This could include sensitive information like your credit card number or street address. That's okay, because but it is a good point that you should only install key keyboards from people you trust. Right, you don't want someone you know just yeah. copying all your text. No, and I'll show you real quickly uh, how much I like why one of the reasons, a couple of the reasons I like the Google keyboard. So we know we're in the Google keyboard now because we have a G. That's one of the features is your Google searches are in there, right? Um, how do I get out of that? I don't know. 
how do you get how do you get out of it? I guess I have to switch again and switch again. And, nope, nope. Ah, cancel maybe. There you go. It also does uh, the autocorrect thing, which is nice. So and and here's a nice little extra button. You can search for emojis and gifs. This is a newer newer feature. So if I wanted a a gulp gif of my very own that I could paste in, I could I could search for a gif. Notice I I alternate gif and gif so that people can't get mm -hmm. mad at me. And you can do that in iMessages now, but you can't do it on the keyboard wherever you are with the right, regular right. keyboard. So Google Keyboard is just, it's a different one, but it's a nice one. I like the search built in. Uh, I think that's a nice feature. Um, but here's one of the reasons I don't use third-party keyboards that much is when you, uh, Apple will often switch back to the Apple keyboard. If you're entering a secure field, for instance, like a password, mm -hmm. it'll switch back to protect you. Mm hmm but I find it confusing to not know which keyboard I'm in. So I, you noticed I stripped out all the third-party yeah. keyboards it for can, that reason. It can be annoying. I, I, I also uh, had to reinstall a lot of the ones that I had because... Um, to show you today. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But so if you really, like, if, if you're not writing a ton of text and you really just want to be fancy and you want to pay nine ninety nine a month... <laughs> a month? <laughs> Wow. <laughs> this one, I'm just trying it for three days and then I'm going to cancel it. But maybe I'll fall in love. Who knows? And decide that it's worth the same as what I pay for Netflix. This is called Fancy Key. Um, and you can use all of Look these different keyboards. Wow. There's uh, butterflies. Like, looks like there's water on your keyboard. World Cup. Let's add that World Cup. I'm going to download that one. So it's just a keyboard style. Yeah? Yes, exactly. So uh, enable Fancy Key Pro. Okay, tap and hold the, I don't, okay, so I think there might, this might be an iOS 12 bug, because I don't see the world unless it's, oh, there we go. Okay, so now I have this uh, World Cup keyboard that I can oh, share it to anyone. Oh, boy. Anyone. And so, you're going to pay $10 a month for that? I don't think so. Well, not so. just this one. You have so many. Um, how Little often? Soccer ball. <laughs> how really? How often are you? Um. This is, I mean, how much could you type with little soccer balls bouncing all over the place? I think it's... Really oh, that is kind of cool, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Um, so... <laughs> yay! Um, so, yeah, or I could create my own theme if I wanted. I can pick a background. Um, oh, I could put my own photo. Or I could put, I bet I could put a photo of you, Leo. Let's find a photo, photo of you. Photo of me. Ooh. On my keyboard. There we go. Ooh. Oh. Okay, let's see. Um, got so many good photos. Well, I can't find a good photo of you, so I'll put a photo of Gilbert. And then there we go. Do I want, then I hit next. Look, and then I could type on my dog's face. <laughs> and little bubbles. Oh, pop that's up. cool. That's cool. The Gilbert keyboard. Yeah. <laughs> I want more of that. So try it for three days, um, and you might find that it is something that you want to pay nine ninety nine a month for, or you might think that's insane. <laughs> I, I don't judge. I don't judge. <laughs> uh, it is free for a few keyboards. Um, oh, okay. But then, yeah, you, you can, get some there keyboards. Is, uh, there for are free. some free, but but be very careful if you're you know all of a sudden saying like, okay, well I'll try it. It's a three day trial, and then nine ninety nine a month. I, uh, for years, used SwiftKey on Android, and uh, SwiftKey was available uh, on uh, on um, iOS, still is, uh, but Microsoft bought them, and I'm not sure how long Microsoft's going to keep SwiftKey around, but uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice keyboard. It has some nice uh, features, will allow SwiftKey full access. One of the things that SwiftKey does is uh, it... It uses, it looks up in your, let's send a message to a Ms. Ms. Maroney. It, so now I'm in the Google keyboard. This is one thing that's hard to keep. This is the other reason I'm not crazy about Apple's solution. You got to, oh, there's SwiftKey. SwiftKey does have themes, by the way, and I'm in a dark theme right now. But it also looks at your emails, if you, if you let it, you could choose this or not, uh, your text messages to help you do a better job of autocorrect. So it learns from what you've done and what, you, uh, what you're going to continue to do with the SwiftKey keyboard to become better at autocorrect. And I like that a lot. It gave me, a, you know, had a, and it, so that was, a, that was a nice feature. It also has, um, it has the swipe feature, which I don't think Apple still does this, do they? 
They don't. I think Gboard does it as well. Yeah, Gboard but, does um, it. Yeah, this I, a lot of people like. So instead of tapping, you you draw T H E best, and you see how fast you can go if you're just drawing. You're not typing. It's really good with a thumb, by, right? Well, it depends. Yeah, if you're using it on an iPhone, it, absolutely. See, I got that one wrong. Um, sweeping, close. And that's one thing is it's, is it's using heuristics to figure out what you're trying to say based on your movement. But notice, as you move, you're covering a lot of letters. So short words sometimes can be mistaken because mm -hmm. you've, you've drawn it over a lot of letters. Um, I like I like swiping. I think that's the easiest way to type. Yeah, you can do it in Gboard too, and like I like how you can just do it with your thumb. Um, this was originally called uh, or invented by a, a keyboard called Swipe. That's no longer around. S W Y P E. There must it might, there might be limitations in the va in uh, in how much money you can make. That's Swift Key keyboard, and I I think that's uh, uh, my favorite keyboard in general. Microsoft has acquired them but they still offer it it's free now it used to be paid it has themes it has a lot of nice features if if i could replace the apple keyboard permanently with one keyboard it'd probably be this that that's what you would choose yeah but because apple keeps switching back uh you know i i just stick with the app as you can see i stick with the apple keyboard mm -hmm. We're, i'm aware of all these but you know the other thing that is because i often use a, key, a physical keyboard mm -hmm. um I guess you could still you could still hit the I guess you could still do it. It's just not as it's it, you know you can't swipe if you're using a physical keyboard. You don't have all the themes and all that stuff. So when you're using a physical keyboard, as I am here, I can switch between keyboards. You know, so I can use a Bitmoji keyboard now. But <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> you know, <laughs> if I'm using this keyboard, I don't know how how to really do that. So keyboards are really for people who are typing on screen. Probably best for iPhone. Yeah. Maybe, yeah? And the Bitmoji keyboard is the one that I really use regularly. Because That's I just, interesting. So yeah. you leave that one in. I do because yeah. it's not going to, I'm not going to really type on it. It's not really a keyboard. It's just like, a, oh, you know what? I've, I need to, I need to make this conversation a little more exciting. I'm going to add my Bitmoji there. And I can't remember. Can you uh, replace the emoji keyboard with that? Like just uninstall the, I think the emoji keyboard's always there, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you all, you, you often, you still need, don't, don't do away with, Emojis. You still oh, need I can, emojis. I can get too. rid of you can get rid of any keyboard. Oh, look at that. So let's just yeah, say I'm sure you could get rid let's of just say you want to be really uh cryptic. Get rid of them all. You have to have one. <laughs> okay. But it could just be the English keyboard. Or and it then could just be the Bitmoji keyboard. Yeah, I, could, yeah, I wonder, could that it be? That would be a good experiment if I could speak only if I could just use oh, Bitmojis. Oh dear. Now I've do done that. it. One woman used Bitmojis for three weeks. You <laughs> won't believe minute. what happened. Wait next. a minute. That's it. And if I hit the globe key, can I? I'll never get an. Oh boy, <laughs> I am now permanently. I can't do anything unless I do it in Bitmoji. I don't even know how do I search. Oh, I can get a keyboard searching Bitmoji. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But so, I but I can't. Oh, but I can only do it for searches. Gulp. Now paste it. I wish we didn't have to do that. Yeah. Don't you? I know. That's an Apple Apple thing. I mean, yeah. if Apple owned it, probably you wouldn't have to, but since Snapchat owns it. Yeah. All right. Um, no matter how many times I mention my uh, Magic Keyboard, people still ask, what is the well, keyboard? Well, they see it all is? the time because it's so bright. <laughs> so uh, this is the Colorware keyboard. It is in Fire Engine Red, and it's just the Magic Keyboard that a company called Colorware painted red. And they do all kinds. So the Magic Keyboard is just from Apple. And I really like it. Um, it's Bluetooth. This is it not painted red, um, which means it's a little bit cheaper. And I, I really like this better than any of the iPad keyboards that I've used. It has a little, it doesn't have as much travel as, you know, a lot of keyboards as, or as a, like a mechanical keyboard. But it really is, um, I, do, I do really like it. So that's the one I use. But. It's so big. Well, it's in the box. Oh. <laughs> we probably should just so people know what it looks yeah, like. Sorry, take yes, it out it of the box. Thin. It's not that. It's not that big. No, it's very no. thin. It looked like you had some special boxy keyboard. No, this is magic because it's so thin. That's what makes it magic, and it is not. Um, it's rechargeable. You don't use batteries in it. You plug in the lightning. Yeah, uh, cable. and you can use it with a MacBook if you want. Like if you know you don't like your keyboard, you could plug it right into your MacBook. If you have an iPad Pro, of course, you have the smart keyboard connector, mm -hmm. 
the four or the three little dots at the bottom of the pro and that means you can use apple's own uh smart keyboard or i'm using and i really like it the logitech slim key combo there are a lot of third party not a lot there are several we thought there'd be a lot there actually are fewer than i imagined but there are several companies that make smart connector yeah. keyboards this is my favorite i really like the keyboard it becomes a case with a stand which is nice it has a loop for your uh, pencil. So I, this is the one I've ended up using now for more than a year. I re, I'm really fond of it. And I, and I think the keyboard is very usable. If, ironically, it's easier to type on this for me than on the MacBook or the new MacBook Pro keyboards, mm -hmm. which have such short travel. This is still fairly short travel, but it lands a little softer. Um, it just feels a little more comfortable. And I haven't heard about any repair problems with this, but the good news is if you did have to repair repair it or replace it the keyboard itself is only about 150 bucks so the whole the whole case so be easy enough to uh, replace mm -hmm. okay i'm gonna i have something that's gonna blow your mind are you ready to yes. have your mind blown um this is the tap oh. keyboard very small oh, that's tiny it's like the size of an eyeglass case it's i'm going to put oh, it that on is, my hand you're not going to want to use that that's <laughs> crazy i've seen people uh, talk about this the tap keyboard have you played with it i have Does i have it work for you um do you well, have to be a touch typist for it to, to it work it does it it has its own language oh even worse so <laughs> um mostly what i've discovered from this besides being able to wow you and get you to make that uh, noise which we all like to hear so much uh, uh, uh is so the, just for those of you listening at home, it's this weird. thing uh, straps onto your hand. Like brass knuckles. Like brass knuckles. But Each prettier. finger has its own special transceiver. And you type by moving the fingers, and it somehow notices that you're moving that finger. But I, because there's only five, in order for this to work, you would have to have, do what's called cording. So like uh, each letter might have a different combination of fingers right. right so yeah so you don't move your fingers you have to tap them on something but you could tap them on your oh, head you could oh, tap them oh, you, have, you to have to actually because it has to come to right, a stop i could tap right? them on so okay a e i o u so you don't have to hit too hard just a little light no tap. and i could hit it um so now it's the game a. so i could a e i o u i a U E O <laughs> Did you um do all the training? I I got pretty far down the training. How long do you think it would take you to really master this? Well, uh it depends on how young your brain is, I would say. Yeah. You also <laughs> I'm worried because it's just one hand. Now, yeah. I mean that's part of the benefit of it is you could sit on the, you know, yeah, I've seen people, especially people who like uh, play the piano. Have you ever seen people who play the piano kind of unconsciously almost mm -hmm. be playing? I think once you learn, and then you would you could sit on a train and tap like that. I wish you could see me tapping and the, the phone at the same time. That's all right. We don't really care. <laughs> um, okay, so this is I, good. I, I mean, we could take it as given that you're tapping. I can um, kind of see it. So you could also tap, you could also map your own Move keyboard. Over just a little uh, to the okay. left there. That'll be a little easier. There we go. So I'm going to proceed. So then... Uh, huh. You can remap. You can, it's very difficult to talk. I guess at the end at of the, the day, uh, training uh, with this, your hand is going to feel like a wet noodle. Well, you could just you tap might get lightly. Some, there might be some cramping involved. There might be. Because you're not used to using those muscles. For period, but double tap all fingers. So this would take some dedication. Yes. But I was thinking it was I'm helping intrigued me by it. train my brain in a different way. You know, we do yeah. all those brain training yeah. games. You want to try it? Can I borrow it after you're done? Yes. Um, so you could remap your tap. So you could map it to anything. So if you want to do like so I'm just thinking, would the you quirky <laughs> keyboard... You could put the You'd have to wear that around all the time. <laughs> it might, it's no, you, it's you not exactly it a the, fashion accessory. I think it's lovely. You look like you might have a strange kink. Oh, she's tapping on her head. You can tap anywhere. But I bet if you did it for a week or two, you'd get very fast at it, right? Yeah. Is that I the guess. theory? I mean, I did it. Okay. Here's a guy. He's going to do it. It syncs with any device via Bluetooth. Look, she obviously learns how to do it. She's you can tap under your... Uh, you tap on your boyfriend's head? Mm-hmm. 
Like I could send a secret message. I like to it someone. that they show millennials doing this. Like millennials are gonna do this. <laughs> there's no way. Oh, you can also use it as a mouse. Like you can. Uh, there's a, like a little thing that you can roll around and use now, it as a mouse. There's one issue. I'm a lefty. Oh. Can you flip it around and use it? I I wonder if you would have to buy a left-handed one. I mean, you could flip it around. Yeah, yeah. You just yeah, you just flip it around because then it. Yeah, you try it on your left hand. Somebody's asking if it'd be good for amputees. I guess I don't know. I don't know why you're thinking amputees for well, this. Well, if you are, I mean, if you have sight issues and you, you know, you and you're. I think I it's mean, it's it's good for people with mobility issues, perhaps like they only can move their hand. Um, if you're if you'd lost an arm, it really wouldn't be that useful. Uh, but oh, I see what you're saying. You couldn't touch type if you had maybe you lost one half, mm -hmm. one hand, or one arm. Be hard to touch type. I, I wonder if this will work. I guess it would. I'm uh, putting it on my left hand. Okay. So no. Is it as fast? I wonder as touch. This is, this is, oh, no, I'm, I'm not. I'd have not to start ready. over. <laughs> I don't, I don't know how the to do anything. The period is tapping twice on the, tapping all your fingers twice. You got it. So is A your thumb? A, it worked. Oh. A, E, I, O. It worked. That's What's space? Tap all your fingers once. It's fun, isn't it? You know what? This is kind of interesting. I'm getting it. Okay. So you got this timed. Yeah. As if it weren't hard enough. <laughs> All right. Uh, I get it. So you could do it as a lefty. You just flip it around and put it on your left hand. Yeah. And then, uh, then you go to the next set I of letters. I wish we could do and... both hands. Is there a re I, I mean, maybe. The, maybe... the idea is it's one-handed, I guess. So, But I can't imagine because the next one is like never. It's like. Never feed something, something, something. I don't All good remember. boys deserve something fudge. Like it would be hard. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Here, do you want it back? No, no. You, you want, you're going to try it. I, I feel already uh, my hand is hurting already. Really? But that's mm. purely psychosomatic, but I just, I feel like. So here's the glossary if you can see my. Um... Has anybody seen anybody walking around? <laughs> With one of these on. So, like, the N is the first two together, and, um, yeah, then it's, yeah, I don't know, never feed. It's very, it gets very complicated. For me, I think it was interesting just playing around with it and seeing, like, any kind of game. It's like, oh, can I remember this? Um, but I don't know that I would use it to enter text in any way yet. But I think gamers could use it for different things if you retapped it to different... It's intriguing. Yeah. yeah, actually, you're right. You could map it to uh, your your trigger or, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it charges in this little box, so. So yeah. really all they've got in here is little accelerometers that uh, detect the movement and then the sudden stop. Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of intriguing. Yeah, you play with it and see how fast you can learn how to do it. And how long is battery life? Um, that's a really good question. Does it say it on the website? I have uh, not run out of battery, but I've keep, I, I keep it in its charging case. I doubt you've done it long case. enough to, uh, no. to do it. Uh, no, so this I, is its charging that's case. That's so It charges like up. Pods and then it you know, connects with yeah, the micro yeah. USB, charges with any micro USB. Uh, so all right. you keep it. Um, I will, we'll, I will we'll try it. Check back in. I will try. Oh, I see. You have to do this this direction. Yes. And then there's the mouse on there too. And then just download the app is tap. Tap manager. Hmm. T A P. Yeah, I'll give it a try. All right. I'm, I'm not against it. I mean, I think that for the right person, this would be uh, could be really useful. But I I wouldn't say that this is going to be a mass appeal. No. Replacement not, for the keyboard. Not yet. But you're right. Thanos probably really be good at this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, like, if you were, let's say, at an open house and you whipped out your iPhone and you had your tap keyboard and you wanted to apply for a mortgage, you could easily do that. <laughs> They'd think you really belonged in the future, right? <laughs> with, it'd be kind of cool. Yes, with Rocket like, Mortgage. Yeah. Because, no, I got where you were going. <laughs> good, good. Uh, I think I'd be, I'd be kind of, I'm going to have my put my Vuvuzela on the special Vuvuzela holder that we've oh, great. invented here. It's called a microphone stand. I'm sure that's going to sound wonderful. <laughs> Crunch. Crunch. Our show today brought to you by Rocket Mortgage. The folks at Quicken Loans created Rocket Mortgage to make mortgage is simple. But, you know, let's talk about buying a home for a minute because there's another issue with home buying these days. Interest rates are all over the place. They're going up. That means when you're about to buy a home, you're about to look for a home, there's some unpredictability. You know, you could say, I'm start buying, start looking for a home today. 
And by the end of the month, the interest rates could have gone up a bunch. Would it be nice if you could lock it in? Well, you can. It's the power buying process from Quicken Loans. Here's how it works. Quicken Loans, as always, as usual with Rocket Mortgage, will verify your income, assets, and credit. They'll do this fast, less than 24 hours, give you a verified approval, which, by the way, is great. That means you're as good as a cash buyer from the point of view of the seller. You, you're ready. You've got the money, you know. But once you're verified, you qualify for something brand new. This is the exclusive rate shield approval from Quicken Loans and Rocket Mortgage. They'll lock up your rate for up to 90 days. So this is what you do at the beginning of your shopping experience. You have three months now to find a house, but you know there's no uncertainty. You know what your rate's going to be. At, well, but, but there's an exception. Not if the rate goes up. That doesn't matter. But if the rates go down, so does your rate. So it can never go up. If your rates go up, your rate stays the same. But if they go down, your rate drops. Either way, you win. This is the kind of thinking you'd expect from America's best mortgage lender, largest mortgage lender, Rocket Mortgage, from Quicken Loans. To get started, go to rocketmortgage.com slash iOS today. Rate shield approval is valid only on certain 30-year purchase transactions. Additional conditions or exclusions may apply based on Quicken Loans data in comparison to public data records. Equal housing lender. Licensed in all 50 states at MLSConsumerAccess.org, number 3030. I like Kevin's showing the disclaimers at the bottom of the page. Mm -hmm. So you can read along mm -hmm. as I read them. RocketMortgage.com slash iOS. You can read it all. Uh, RocketMortgage.com slash iOS today. So the idea is as you're about to go out to buy a house, first thing you do is you go to RocketMortgage.com slash iOS today. You get locked in, and now you've got 90 days with no uncertainty. I think that's really great. Rocketmortgage.com slash iOS today. We thank Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans for their support. We're, I was doing this ad on Twit on Sunday, and uh, two out of the three panelists were had a loan from Rocket Mortgage. Mm -hmm. They just were buying a house. So that's awesome. Rocketmortgage.com slash iOS today. All right, several of you sent me a link to this uh, new iPhone case that is not, it's still just a prototype. Have With the Android it? on it? N no, you mean the ones that pop out when you drop it? No, there's okay. A, there, okay, so we talked this week on uh, All About Android about an iPhone case that has an Android phone <laughs> built into the case. No, that is. <laughs> That's not it? That, no, this no one, one wants that. Uh, this okay. one has built-in sensors and springs, so when you drop it... Oh, the airbag it, case. Yeah, it's just basically like airbags. It's a student from Germany who created it. He has a patent. I hope he gets an A. Um, <laughs> it has already won the Germ an, a top award of the German Society for Mechtronics. For um, what, Tronics? Mechtronics. Mechtronics. Mechatronics. German Society of Mechatronics. You've never heard of that? I want to join it. <laughs> Mechatronics. Mechatronics. So uh, can you show the video of it dropping, um, Kevin? So and like an airbag, it's instant. Yeah. How do it know? Nice. Accelerometers? I guess. Huh? It's a clever idea. Yeah. But then you have to carry this thing around. It's part of the case. It, it doesn't, you know, it's... There's it a normal looks, looking looks, case? Well, I'd I mean, like normal, to see what the like case looks out without the case Can we, is there a picture of the case without the yeah. things extending um there, is there it right is there. okay so it's got some little blue bumpers all yeah. right i think it's cute i don't know i uh there's I have people a, who should have this case yeah i have a super thin case and um and i've dropped my phone and nothing's happened people it's a big problem it's a big problem you can't uh it's everybody who has an iphone has broken it once or twice have you no I know, me neither. <coughs> but I, I have, uh, my kids have. This is a good, yeah, kids do. Mm -hmm. This is a good case. I think adults like tend to, well, first of all, they're the ones who bought it, so they mm -hmm. know how much it costs. Mm -hmm. But I think we also, we put it somewhere more safe, yeah. right? Yeah, um, I think you learn. Yeah, like the ki kids don't kids, have purses. They're carrying they in their back pockets. Back pocket. or the, You know, <laughs> Henry used to have a bad habit of doing this with his phone. He would flip it. <laughs> And well, what a surprise. It broke once, yeah. you know, I mean, didn't catch it. That was a bad habit. So kids, I think kids, maybe it's because they didn't pay for it. Make them pay for it and see if they break it. Um, yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I want to, so I want an, one of those, can we get the electronics guy to make one for my head? Oh, so that if I stumble if and drop, fall like a helmet, <laughs> well, there is, there are those bicycle helmets. Have you seen them? They're like, just like big puffy scarfs. And if you get in an accident, they puff up and make a helmet. But I mean, you got to really trust those. It's a big puffy scarf. Mm -hmm. huh? Uh, yeah, I like it. Does uh, it look like that? I like it. 
<laughs> uh, big news in uh, buying stuff. Are you excited uh, about Amazon Prime Day? Oh, when is that? July 16th. Why is it that there's all these sales in July? Is it just because it's halfway to Christmas? Yes. It's, yeah, it's, I guess it's, yeah, it's halfway to Christmas. And why are there always, because they're trying to sell more stuff. And so uh, really? they want a new Black is that Friday. The, is that why? <laughs> <laughs> this is the new Black Friday Prime Day. It's been huge, right? Yeah. Although nothing like uh, the in China, what do they call, is it Children's Day? What oh, is the it's. It's Singles Day. Singles Day. Singles Day. Which is huger than huger than huge. Yeah. Huger than anything else out there, including mm -hmm. Black Friday. Singles Day. But uh, this is the next next big thing, Prime Day. Do you get deals on Prime Day? Um, I think we've, you know, we've covered Prime Day. I think this is the third year that there's Prime Day. Yeah. And so the best advice for me always comes from the wire cutter because they go through all the deals and they tell you what a real deal is what's and a what good a deal fake what's not. deal is. Yeah. And... So I think it's always good if you if you are in the market to buy things like um, you know popular things like maybe this is the year that I buy the um, the quick pot or whatever the instapot and you know if you kind of make a list of the things that you feel like you need in your life and what price they are now and then when you get to Prime Day you can actually compare the bad thing to do is just to go on Prime Day and think oh I need that I need that well that's, that's what they hope the, you'll yeah. do that's the Costco model the big box store model right. where you just go and you figure I must be getting a deal mm -hmm. and you buy more than you should mm -hmm. so the wire cutter reviews the deals and then tells you if it's a good deal or not that's a good place to go and then our friend Renee Ritchie uh, his company Mobile Nations has a site called Thrifter. Oh, that's part of Mobile Nations? I didn't know Yeah. That. And I love Thrifter, Thrifter. Yeah. So it tells you deals all year, but they have a Prime Day newsletter. So if if uh, you scroll down a little bit, there it is. You see that Prime Day newsletter. You can go there and sign up for that. And then that way you'll be alerted to the best deals before they're gone. I they they actually, this is like a <laughs> both Wirecutter and, uh, and Thrifter. Prime Day is like a war room for them. They get, they get, everybody comes in, they all work, they're all, there's hundreds of, they're going, rrr, rrr, and they, so it's a big deal for them. Yeah. Yeah. And, but it's a good deal for us because uh, if there is a deal, they'll find it. Right. I might buy myself some Hue lights. Um, I have, uh, you know. Usually the best deals on Amazon's Prime Day are for Amazon products like the Echo. Right. If you haven't bought an Echo yet, I would wait till Prime Day because that'll be, that'll be the day to buy an Echo mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, so what's, what do you think about this story about app developers sifting through our email? Yeah, I saw that and, uh, consider the source, which is the wall street journal. Um, I have to say, and I, this is an important part of media literacy for all of us. Remember that the wall street journals business is in direct competition with Facebook, Google, and all these other people. And this is essentially a hit piece on Google. Uh, if you use Gmail, the good news is Google stopped looking through your email, right? They used to scan your email looking for keywords so they could customize advertising. And last year they said, "Yeah, people don't like it. We're not going to do it. Doesn't mean, though, that you can't get somebody else to look through your email. So anytime you sign up for a service, Unroll Me was quite famous, right? You sign up for this service that would un unsubscribe you from newsletters. Well, in order for them to do that, they have to read your mail. Duh, right? And in the process of reading your mail, they get information. And Unroll, Unroll Me was selling that information. That was the business model. If you get a free service that goes through your email, you can pretty much be sure that the way they monetize is by selling information about you. In the case of Unroll Me, we know at least Uber was buying information from unroll me so they mention a couple of email uh services one There's, of them is one i use yeah right edison yeah but let me ask you this when you signed up for edison did you not understand that in order to do it does automatic replies mm -hmm. right that it would have to look at your email to do automatic replies right. yeah you knew that yeah so i don't know what the wall street journal is telling us here except that it's doing that yeah, the term "dirty little secret" is that's it's th we, this that's has a, been a long-standing kind of uh, mo for the Wall Street Journal, which I read and I like, and I think they do excellent tech coverage. But pretty much every month or two, they'll do a hit piece on Google, effectively, mm -hmm. and I think it really has more to do with their business model than it does to do with really the dangers of Google. Not that I mean, I guess if somebody doesn't know this, 
And what's really of interest is, well, what do they do with this stuff? And, you know, in this article, they came up with a couple of cases where companies use humans. Normally, it's all done by computers, right? So you might say, well, if Google, you know, Google, for instance, any service that's, that blocks spam is also reading your email, right? How would it know what's in your email to block it? So they came up with some circumstances where it wasn't computers, but these companies weren't doing a good job, so they hired some uh, computer scientists to go through the mail to train the computer. And again, I'm not sure that's so much of a surprise, nor do... Look at how they've lit those guys. Like, <laughs> they're dark hackers going through your email. I think that that is... That's kind of... Really? <laughs> Really? Uh, I, I think that it's kind of... So, so I would say, of course, you should understand this. And if you didn't, well, this is a, a little bit of an eye-opener to you. But you must have known when you signed up for Edison, If you all you have to do is think about it for three seconds. How would they know what automated replies? If they couldn't read the email in the first place, mm -hmm. they wouldn't know what to suggest. Yeah. Same and thing with, uh, with Google's automated replies or spam filtering these they have to go through your email to do this stuff so just so you know that i think what's ernie is another one now this is an interesting one so and i'm sure a lot of people liked this idea ernie looks at receipts in your email <clears throat> and then says oh i can get a better deal for you then goes out and negotiates with the company that you bought it from to get a cut a cut and then splits it with you mm -hmm. I think that sounds like a worthwhile service, and it's probably okay for. I mean, you might say, "Well, that's that." I get something of benefit, so it's let it's okay for them to read my email. It isn't, and it never was. I don't think somebody like like the, what they want to paint this as is some guy sitting in a dark room. <laughs> Let's see what their mail is, because that doesn't scale very well. The, right? I think they're trying to draw a um, a correlation between that being the same thing as like Facebook sharing your friendship data, which you didn't necessarily You didn't know. approve of. Yeah. In so, this case, you're saying. Yeah. Now, and, and Google does, by the way, vet these companies and there are a, whole, a bunch of agreements before you they're allowed to do this. And I think one of the things the journal does say, and I think it's true, is Google, it's really on Google to make sure that these companies are doing exactly what they said and no more. So Ernie looking at your receipts is one thing. But if Ernie is then also collecting uh, all your email addresses and selling that to a spammer for an email list, that would be wrong. Mm -hmm. And I think the journal implies that in some cases that may be happening. And so that's something that should be looked at. Uh, and, uh, and Google, I'm sure, you know, in fact, in the past, Google has not kicked people off their platform saying, you're doing stuff that, you know, is not what you say you're doing. Uh, Unroll Me never did something it didn't say it was doing. They said, we're going to go through your mail. We're going to look for newsletters. But they took the information that they got from that. And they sold it to companies like Uber. Uh they didn't get in trouble, but I think a lot of people quit Unroll Me, as I did, uh, because I didn't like that idea. So be aware, when you're giving any company permission to look at your email, guess what? They're going to look at your email. <laughs> so another interesting story, Facebook is uh, closing several of their apps. One is TBH, which was an app we talked about here <laughs> like six months ago. It was the they say nobody used these programs. <laughs> no, which I thought this was funny because everybody used, every kid I, I knew um, used TBH really? for a while. Yes, for but a then very stop. short while. To like, be honest, it, see yes. who likes you. So it was an app that was super popular for maybe a couple of months. You would go on, I went on, you know, pretended to be a teen as I am because that's the kind of mom I am. What, what happens when you use that app? You, somebody you, says, I like you? Uh, or I hate you or like TBH. Like to you? Uh, to like you put it in there and you'll say like okay Leo. What do Laporte you think of Megan is, Maroney? Yeah, exactly. And Except then, that it's you, Megan Maroney, doing that. Well, no, I mean you can look at or yourself you can say and somebody like else? everybody else is. And there there were questions. It was sort of no. This was how it worked. It was like who is most likely to um you know uh have sex in the bathroom or something like that. And then it was like three people. Like, so it would be like Leah Laporte, Megan Maroney, and... But uh, not together. No, no. There was okay. one, you know, one... It, that wasn't one of the... Maybe that was one of the questions, <laughs> but that wasn't one of the questions. I don't know why I use this example. I'm so sorry. You're as bad uh, as I am. I'm uh, rubbing off on you. But this is what Maybe that's... We should stop said. having sex in the bathroom. <laughs> uh, I understand. And there was another one called Hello. 
Yeah, that was. Yeah, I don't even remember it. that one. Right. And what was the other one? Moves. Yeah, I, think I don't that remember was that Android either. Android too. But my point about the TBH was that they bought it because I'm sure all these people's kids were using it. And then but they stopped they using. Moved it. on so fast. That's really the problem. And it, we're, we're in. This is true of everything, right? Everybody was using Pokemon Go until mm -hmm. they weren't. <laughs> There's a, a lot of cases. Remember, um, what was the name of that Art Pop? What was the game where you? Uh, Drew things and there was a, a pop, o, o pop or o, OMG pop. It was a, it was like number one, like from zero to sixty in a week. It was number one in the app store. And Zynga said this is great, and they bought it for millions of dollars, and it tanked like instantly, instantly, and practically killed Zynga. Uh, that's the problem with this stuff. It's very hit driven. Yeah, so they closed it up. Hello, moves and TBH. TBH. Sorry, to be honest. It, we're killing it. Well, the funny thing about TBH was it was intended to sort of be the positive version of this. But of course it wasn't. But it was always like kids turned, some kids turned it positive, but you know, a Most lot of kids of time, turned it yeah. negative. So. It's like Yik Yak. Remember Yik Yak? Yeah. I think this was the uh, the alternative to, to Yik Yak. Was Which was, sort of, uh, yeah. yeah. There have been a number of school apps designed for as school kids to, to yeah. gossip about each other. And they've right. all, it's always good. It never goes well. Yeah. Ever. But, <laughs> yes. What one? Hello, title? TBH, we're moving on. From oh, the title, Hello, TBH, yeah. we're moving on. We're um, killing Hello, TBH, and moves. Okay, so now we have some feedback from you. Oh, dear. We have a Memoji reply to the show from Preston. This is our first Memoji. And, you know, we've talked badly about Memoji, but this is, I, I love Memoji replies. I do want to, I we want, want more, more of, those. of those. I'm not talking back badly about Memojis. I like Memojis. So um, let's hear Preston. Hello, Megan and Leo. When you were talking about the current way to use the upcoming Walkie Talkie app, I was reminded of a feature in iMessage, which lets you send short audio messages. I use that all just the time. Just hold on the mic icon in yep. the text box before you type. Love the show. Keep it up. Bye. <laughs> That's kind of amazing. It is amazing. I told, you really yeah. felt like he was there. Yeah. I told Preston how amazing it was. Uh, Especially the and, head yeah, tilt at the and end. And his hair. Ugh. Amazing. His hair waved. Yeah. It moved. Yeah. So more emoji nice responses. Memoji. So yes. Um, thank you for that. Um, and, and that is a good tip by the yeah. way is you press and hold the microphone and then you could quit record something and if you slide up it'll send it immediately mm -hmm. and that is you're right that's basically walkie talkie isn't it i didn't really think about that sort of i mean if you have alerts but yeah i've certainly um i've never used that intentionally apple advertised it because people often make it's hard to type words you don't know remember they did the whole thing on words you can't spell and well just record it instead mm -hmm. So and I I use it when sometimes it's faster if you're if you're uh, doing something or it's just faster to just say something. Mm -hmm. But you're right; it's not it's not very common. What I, what you find though with a lot of messages features is people don't use them. Mm -hmm. Do you do you get any fireworks anymore, or lights in the sky, or balloons going up? And very well, rarely. Here's my thing that I do when I want to wow people on iMessage: the Bitmoji with sent with echo. Let me show you. <laughs> <laughs> demonstrate. Please. Let me demonstrate. Um, let me. Okay, so we'll send it to you, Leo. Okay, there's you talking to me uh, as a, let's an, an say, emoji. Uh, not the pole dancing. Oh Definitely come on! Not that. Meet um, you in the bathroom one. after the after the show. Okay. Uh, okay. So hey now. Now how do you and do then the I echo? Long press, long press and I go to the screen effect. Yeah. Wow. And then uh, I'm gonna send it. That's so, the echo. Yeah. That's terrifying. <laughs> Isn't it? So um, there we go. Shall, shall I uh, check Hopefully my messages? Hopefully I sent it to the right one. Oh, I got one from... Okay. Uh, That's it. So you have to. You can press replay. So. I got one from Megan Maroney. Wow. <laughs> that is a... Uh, that is quite a... <laughs> Quite a quite a response. That's there. my signature move. See, you know, I am known in many of my Megan's signature move, ladies <laughs> that's and gentlemen. Signature. That's that's how I get you. Um, in in many circles of friends, I'm known as the person that knows about these things, and yes. I like to show that off yes. as much as possible. I used one once with somebody, and they said, "Yeah, I'm not really up on that all that iOS crap." <laughs> <laughs> it was like, what a put down. Yeah, I know. Holy cow! Okay, I guess I will. I'll be just texting you from now on. <laughs> Was, and the other issue I often have is, well, what is what do people on Android see if you if you get that? 
Uh, they see, okay, here's what, this is, I do have a, a good story about that. Um, I sent that to a group message, including Burke, who's on Android. And then I got a message back from him. He said, your, Megan, your Echo just sent me a message. And I was like, that's not from my Echo. That's sent with Echo. So what he hears is sent with Echo. So it appears that it came from my Amazon Echo, but okay. it really was sent that's with Echo. That's not what you want, is it? Yeah. Mm. Um, hmm. So yeah, that's what your Android friends hmm. get. Uh, you got to be careful with Something those Android confusing. friends. confusing. Burke is my only Android friend. Just kidding. And Alex. That's it. <laughs> I actually I use Android and then Abby lost her iPhone broke so I sent her she's using a, a Note 8 so I have to kind of be aware now when I send stuff to my yeah. daughter. I know. No, I have one other friend. Uh, it would just be easier if you just would all use iPhones, please. Everyone in my book club was using an iPhone and then my one friend Jenny had to go get a Pixel <sighs> and she ruined everything. Jenny in the hood. I know. <laughs> so true. Um, okay, so Matthew Payne. Or the block. Jenny from the block. Yeah, Jenny from the block. I gotta get my JLo references. <laughs> She's got her pixel. That, Jenny that from thing. the pixel. <laughs> um, Matthew Payne sent us a little video because we asked for videos nice. of his experience with the iOS 12 beta. And so we can take a look and a listen. Hi, Megan and Leo. It's Matthew here from England. He's whispering. I've been using iOS 12 for a little while now on my iPhone 7 Plus and a 2018 iPad. Yes. After speaking with Megan via email, I would like to share some of my thoughts as to how the new software has been performing on my devices. Firstly, I want to mention the optimization and performance of this software, which is something that has been pushed by Apple iOS 12 supports devices going all the way back to iPhone 5S and the original iPad Air. What I like most about this is that not only does Apple still support these devices, but unlike iOS 11, the user experience is vastly improved um, from a speed and usability standpoint. Features such as the activation of camera when you swipe over from the lock screen um, can now perform at up to 70% faster. The keyboard on these older devices now displays up to 50% faster. And app launching is now two times faster when the device is under a heavy workload. These small performance upgrades really do make the big difference um, for those using older devices. I've seen my friends getting really frustrated with their iPhone 6s, for example, uh, which are still running iOS 11, obviously, um, when doing simple things like swiping through the home screen pages, which often leads to lag and stuttering from the device. So I'm sure you can imagine how doing more intensive things has a much uh, worse result. But this is going to get much better in iOS 12. As I mentioned, I've been using iOS 12 on my main devices, which are my iPhone 7 Plus, um, my iPad, the 2018 version, um, and some would advise against running pre-release software on your main devices. But from my experience, and I can only go on how my devices have performed compared to the last two years I've been running beta software, um, it's been like using a fully fledged version already. Um, in other words, it doesn't feel like a beta um, for the most part. I love the enhancements to ARKit. Um, such as the Measure app, which is um, so useful and an opportunity that I saw when AR was first being pushed by Apple. Um, and we originally saw in those apps that developers made that are now replaced by Apple's own Measure app. You may remember the demo at WWDC um, a few weeks ago of the Lego AR app, um, where users can create a living world around their existing set. Um, the Lego AR app has been on the App Store for a few days now, um, and I've given it a go, um, and it's a really magical experience. It really shows off the AR Kit 2 functionality. Um, you don't actually need a specific Lego set um, to use the app, as you can augment these sets into a flat plane in front of you. But the real magic comes from when you use the app and physical sets in combination to interact with each other. Um, and in my view, this is exactly what Tim Cook um, has been saying uh, for months and years now about when he wants to focus AR um, rather than focusing on VR, um, because the goal is to enhance the world around you and not replace it by uh, a completely virtual one. All the way from England in the United Kingdom, I've been Matthew. Back to you, Megan and Leo. <laughs> I feel like Matthew maybe stayed up past his bedtime, didn't want mom to know he was sending us that. Do you think that's why he was I whispering? thought he was maybe in the carol, in a carol at school. Oh, it was in the college. library at college. But I don't know. He didn't tell me. Yes, um, he was very quiet. But I, I thought it was, thank you so much. That was a little bit longer. If I love videos. Make them like a minute long. Here's the deal. Uh, and I think this is nice to hear from him because... We heard those exact performance numbers at the keynote, and I, to be honest, on the more modern devices that we're using, I haven't seen any performance. I mean, it's it's not visible. I haven't mm -hmm. measured it, 
And you know, if you're if it takes half a second to launch an app, and then Apple gets it down to a quarter of a second, that is a fifty percent improvement. Improvement, but I don't know if anyone would really appreciate a quarter of a second mm -hmm. difference, right? On the other hand, he's pointing out, and I think this is good because we don't use old devices. Mm -hmm. You 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 did put iOS twelve on a six S, mm -hmm. but if it if it's better on if older devices perform better, that's that is a big win. Mm -hmm. So I don't think you're going to notice much of a performance improvement with iOS 12 on newer devices, but maybe on an older device. I would I would caution you, there are a lot of issues uh, with the new betas of both iOS and uh, Mac OS, and so you shouldn't install those. And tvOS too, you could try the public beta that. They are public, they're easy, you know, you can, you can do it now by going to beta.apple.com, but I really would not recommend you do it on a, on a production device. I kind of regret doing uh, iOS 12 on my iPhone, uh, one of the reasons is it takes a for me on the modern iOS device it took a long time for it to go out of the do not disturb mode when I had you know when you turn on not merely do not disturb but the what do they call that the um, like while you're screen playing? time oh, so yeah. I what would happen is I would be in screen time disable and it would take the the phone would be un, literally unresponsive. Mm -hmm for 30 seconds while it re-enabled it in the morning so i ended up turning that off and now i don't find i have that problem so that's an example of something that will be surely fixed when ios 12 comes out but because you're using a pre-release version you're I, I was getting weird freezes cosmetic issues i tried to install mojave on my mac imac pro and it and it broke and I had to reinstall the entire hard drive going back to High Sierra. So it is important to listen, heed Apple's warnings, do a backup before you do the upgrade. I would recommend not doing it on a production device, but on a, if you had an older phone that you had lying around, that would be a better way to do it. Uh, I wanted to use Memoji, so we put it on an iPhone 10. This is my main phone, and I kind of have some regrets. It's not, in many ways, not as performant as it should be. So that's the problem with a beta. But I think you're right. When it comes out in the fall, I think he's right that... It'll be a it'll be a welcome upgrade. Mm -hmm. well, thanks for the video, Matthew. Um, so, have you been using the screen time? I I have. I turned some, it off, as I said. But before that, would, would it notify you that you so were two annoying. hours? So I've noticed um, my kids use. Uh, I put iOS twelve on their iPads, and it's been good so far because they're at the age where like we're really just trying to teach them self regulation. Like I'm not going to Yeah, it's be, useful for them, right? Yeah, like I'm yeah. not going to be telling you when to get off your device. Like you just need to learn how to do that yourself. And so it's <clears> no <throat> like they're just noting like, "Oh wow, I've been on the iPad for 2 hours. I've been using YouTube yeah. for 2 hours." Yeah, that's They'll good. ignore it, but at least that's something physically they have to do. And even if you turn off the disabling feature of screen time, you still get that information. Yeah. So I still know, for instance, that I did Pokemon Go for four hours and 22 minutes this week. Probably not what I wanted. <laughs> I had no idea that you spent that much time with Pokemon Go. Well, I started playing it again because uh, they've added some really fun new features. Okay. Well, does it make you, does it bring you joy? Yeah, it does. Okay, then there's no and worries. I'm, and, and I'm doing it while I'm walking. So right. that's the other side of that. That means I've walked this week an extra mm -hmm. four hours and 22 minutes just to play Pokemon Go. And it and you can see it's declined through the week. It was really the oh. worst was on Tuesday of last week mm -hmm. when it came out. That's when Renee Ritchie, that son of a gun, told me about all the new features oh, of Pokemon yeah. Go. Yeah. Okay, so we've got time for one question, I believe. And this is a tough one. This is a mystery question. Tom from Crystal Lake, yes. Illinois, yes. writes, when I'm on Wi-Fi... Apple.com comes up not secure and wants info from me. But when I turn off Wi-Fi and use cellular, then it comes up as a normal secure site. Both Safari and Chrome do the same thing, which leads me to believe that it's something with the router. I've reset my router and the same thing happens. I've also cleared all the history and the caches. Same thing happens on my Mac, my iPad, my iPhone. I did a screen recording and uploaded it to YouTube for you to see exactly what's happening all other websites come up fine. And being an I'm an Apple fanboy, this is killing me. The only other thoughts I had were to reset the router to the factory settings or purchase new. Do you want to see the video or the photos? Yeah. There we go. So you could. What? What am I seeing? <laughs> that, I don't know. Oh, uh, I see. The certs are the out of date. Yeah. The... So you have three out of date certs for Apple. They're all expired. Right. Delete them. Oh, you can just delete those? Yeah. 
Okay. Um, so is that why? Like, why is it only working on, like, why, why does he have out-of-date certs? How do you get out-of-date certs? Um, I don't know, but just delete them. See if that fixes it. Okay, delete the cert. So the reason you get, when you go to a secure site, the way it's secured is using something called TLS, that's why you see the HTTPS, is the site has a certificate which you can then in your browser, using the certificate authorities your browser already has built in, say, look at that certificate and say, that's valid. <clears throat> and if it's valid, that means you not only are secure, but that that conversation is now encrypted using the key that's provided by the valid certificate. So this is a really good system. And Google's been pushing everybody to make sure that all web surfing is valid for a number of reasons. It eliminates the issue of a man in the middle, somebody Posing is Apple.com. But one of the validity checks the browser does, the very first thing it does is make sure that the it was, the certificate is not expired. That the to today's date is, uh, is, you know, before the expiration date of the certificate. In your case, I saw three certificates, and that's why you have a red X across them, that are expired. So let's watch him go there. He just goes to, you know, if try HTTPS, and yeah, that is not secure. <clears throat> uh, and that's because he's on Wi-Fi he gets that mm -hmm. um, that's really interesting I'm not sure why I would try HTTPS explicitly instead of just typing apple.com mm. and now he's getting what you should get which is the green apple.com with the padlock closed that means it's a secure site why would it happen on browsing on Wi-Fi but not yeah well so I would delete those old certificates for sure um and then I'm not sure, uh, boy, that's interesting. I'm not sure what's um, what's going on there. Something sad, does have something going on with your router. I would also check for an update on your router. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure your router's up to date. Um, and if you're using an alternative DNS, you know what, that's almost certainly what's happening, is that your router, so when you're not on Wi-Fi on your uh, device, you're using the, not using the router anymore. You're using the 4G or the LTE from your phone company. When you're using your router, uh, your router does the DNS lookup. And I think if your router's using a non-traditional DNS, if you're not using your ISPs, that could cause a problem. Some ISPs also cause a problem. They actually do a man-in-the-middle attack. So I'm your, your router is almost certainly the suspect here. It may be compromised, so that's why a firmware update would, would be indicated. And if you don't have new firmware to install, if you can, and on many routers you can, reinstall the current firmware. That'll wipe out any uh, infection that you might have on that router. So understand that the router is, it, it may be that the router or your internet service provider is, is trying to break the certificate or trying to use a, an improper certificate. That, is, that does not sound good. I would, uh, the router's the culprit. If it's, uh, if it's an older router, it might be time for a new one. If you can update the firmware or reinstall the existing firmware, I would absolutely do that. That will get rid of things like VPN filter. Router compromises are becoming more and more comp com uh, common because these devices uh, often have lots of security problems. Uh, you didn't say what router you're using. No. If you're using a non... Uh, uh, if you have a special DNS, open DNS or something, or 9.9.9.9 or 1.1.1.1 in there as your DNS server take that out go back to your isps if you're using your isp as a dns server some isps really do try to get into that traffic especially encrypted traffic because they can't see what you're doing they'd like to then absolutely start using uh i would i i would start using quad nines 9.9.9.9 .9 or quad ones 1.1.1.1 which comes from a, a cloud flare uh and those are privacy uh intended to be private DNS servers, um, more private than your ISP. Yeah, there's something something significantly wrong there, and that sounds to me like it's your router. I know that was a little bit beyond a good question, uh, the actually. iOS, but yeah, Keith yeah. is a fan, and I thought it was a really interesting question. If no, it's a very good question. He, he What he did is made it very specific and gave us a lot of information so that we could understand a little bit more about what's going on. I think, I think you're getting a bad certificate for some reason from your router from whoever the dns provider is on that router you're getting a bad certificate 
and that's not good. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That means perhaps your ISP is trying to break in. Sometimes ISPs do that. They want to insert ads, that kind of thing, uh, or spy on you. And I, I called you Keith Tom. Sorry, Tom. Tom, Tom Keith. Is, Tom is, that was from Tom. We'll get to Keith's Thanks, question Tom. next week. But now it's time for us to put on some hats. Well, you know, it is World Cup time. It is, the football. So, uh, unfortunately, Switzerland just lost as we record this. Mm. But you're going to celebrate Switzerland. And I, I am celebrating Russia. Uh, not because I want Russia to win. I actually, I think Russia should deserve to lose because they pulled shenanigans to get the World Cup. Nevertheless, they're playing very well and they are in the knockout round. So actually, who are you really voting for? Uh, I'm Vote, really for? pulling for Mars. Mars is not in the World Cup this Oh, they're year. not. <laughs> Their soccer team was a little weak. Oh. <laughs> Uh, uh, I I do like this hat though, and I couldn't find a, a Martian cute hat? hat. Yeah. Um. So let's. I uh my app cap I can't find. <laughs> you want me to start? You start. Yes. I rarely start. You re you start this time because I got I lost right. my app cap. We are celebrating the World Cup. Actually, there's two big sporting events going on right now. One is Wimbledon. Wimbledon, the big uh, tennis championship in Great Britain, is going on right now. And they have a fun Wimbledon app that lets you keep track. Will I be visiting Wimbledon? Alas, not this year. But lets you keep track of what's going on. Allow Wimbledon to access your location. Never always allow, only while using the app. But now that way I could see what time it is in London. It's 642. And center court play is in progress. I can get the latest uh, news from... Whoops, <laughs> didn't mean to do that. I can get the latest news from Wimbledon. Sasnovich sends Kivitova crashing out. So again, trouble for Russians. Uh, so this is fun. But let's face it, the next few days are going to be heavily occupied by watching the World Cup. And there are two apps I would recommend. The official FIFA World Cup 2018 app is free. And uh, I accept the terms of service. I haven't installed it. I have it on my iPhone. But, but actually, this is good to do it on the iPad because you can see the process of onboarding you pick your favorite team i'm rooting you know i was rooting for japan that was such an exciting game yesterday but i guess i guess i'm gonna root for england because they should have had the world cup mm -hmm, you could should. decide what notifications now <laughs> if you're cray cray if you're a big fan you will get a notification of goals yellow cards red cards periods we're in the first period the second period or lineups I want it all. Yeah, get it all. I want it all. Notifications from FIFA. You also get to follow other teams besides your favorite team. And, of course, I'm following Belgium. They've been they've been doing well. Uh, I'm very curious uh, how, um, boy, so many teams have been knocked out that are on this list. I was rooting for Mexico. They got knocked out. Um, who should I root? Who else should I be following with interest? I think I want to know how Brazil's doing. I think Brazil's going all the way. Don't you? And then you can see the live blog, Colombia and England. Colombia and England coming up. I think we should end this show right now. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a big one. That's going to be a big one. Uh, you can see how the uh, the statistics, if you love statistics, so does, so does everybody who plays soccer. That's a lot of fun. Video highlights. This was so exciting. If you, if you didn't see the game, I want to see the last goal. The, of the Japan-Belgium game. Japan goes up 2-0. The underdog goes up 2-0 very early in the game before the first, in the first half. No one can believe it. Look at the blue striker is J Japanese. It's goal! The Japanese fans are excited. Oh, my goodness. Hard to believe. I mean, after all, Belgium is a World Cup power. They go down 2-0? Yes! Goal! But don't give up on plucky Belgium, the Bl Belgian Red Devils. I, I was rooting for Japan because it was so unexpected. Yeah. Uh, but the Red Devils come back very quickly. Oh, what a goal. The, the, the key goalkeeper can't protect that one. A beautiful, beautiful strike here. Watch. Oh, he punches it away, but that's not good enough. He doesn't punch it far enough. Watch this Red Devil action. He heads it and into the goal from over there. How does he do it? It's a miracle. I think he was surprised, frankly. <laughs> I don't think he was aiming for the goal, but he hit it. But the best goal was the last goal of the game with just a few seconds left in, I think it was in the 93rd or 94th minute. So now it's tied up. 94th minute. Boom. 
Beautiful move. A decoy. He heads it in, and in the very last seconds of the game, here, watch it. This is the best goal ever. This is the best goal ever. Really a remarkable play. Beautiful decoy move, and it's over. Literally, that ended the game. There was only seconds to play. They went for the uh, the face. What do they call it? The the face off at the because uh, of the the goal, and then they the referees blew the whistle. It was over. Oh, <gasps> the poor Japanese fans, the crazy Belgian fans. That's World Cup soccer. Now I'm watching all of that in the FIFA app. So that's nice. That's fun. Yeah, that is nice. You can see how the standings go. There's a fan zone. There's a lot in here. Uh, as there should be, because FIFA is a multi-billion-dollar organization. They've done a really, really nice job, uh, I think, of this. Oh, look at that, Sweden! You should be a FIFA announcer. Maybe that's your next goal. I got the Vuvuzela. There's one more app if you're into uh, FIFA. You might want is Fox Sports. Of course, they have the rights to the World Cup. Um, I'm not completely clear if you'd be able. To, I may depend on geography if you'd be able to stream the games uh, in the Fox app. That would be awfully nice. But uh, I think you can. I think you can in some cases stream the games. But if you're following either Wimbledon or the World Cup, there are some great free apps for you to do it. Uh, I th yeah, I get every four years. I get more excited about the World Cup than uh, in almost anything. And the finals are coming up in a couple of, and I think next week. And then, do you like soccer after it's over? Well, you know, it's funny. I always think, oh, you know, I should really watch this more. Because when you first start watching soccer, it seems like the most boring game ever, mm -hmm. right? It just goes on and on. You, your kid plays. Yes. Annabella yeah, plays. Yes. There's a lot of back and forth and back and forth. But once you kind of understand it, they call it the beautiful game, and you really kind of get what's going on. There's, as with any sport, you, there's more excitement. And, when, and, and, and you see a beautiful goal like that last goal with a decoy. Uh, you really appreciate it. And mm -hmm. so after the World Cup, every four years, I go, I should watch more soccer, and then I don't. Well, you can come anytime to any of Annabella's games. I will. I have went to quite a few soccer games at um, the Academy. All right. So my app cap is a bit different. It's called Space Nation Navigator, and it is going to train me to be an astronaut through an app. Mm. So uh, this, they've worked with NASA on this app. It does have, it is free, but it does have ads. And, um, you know, those don't watch an ad, you know, don't, or don't want to watch an ad, then you can pay sort of thing. But uh, I can go on missions. Um, let's see if I can go on uh, this. Let's try a, a body mission. Astro Ooh. fitness. Astro fitness. Astronauts exercise two hours a day to combat the effects of microgravity. The astro fitness program improves your general fitness and builds strength in the areas that suffer in space. So let's get moving. Let's get moving. During weeks one through three, you'll be concentrating on building base fitness. Let's start this mission. So uh, I can do some exercises here. I can do warm up yoga, panoramic stretches. Leg twister. Let's see what leg twister. I guess I have to go in order. So I um, would, there's all these instructions. So there's actual physical exercise. I really want to be a good astronaut. So I um, I want to abort this mission. Yes. Sorry. Uh, I'm going to, Wayfarer down. Let's go on our weekly adventure. This mission is part of habitatability. Habitatability. <laughs> Adessa received your call and hightailed it back to Trappist B with the equipment needed to study the globules. Globules. <laughs> globules. <laughs> globules. Unfortunately, her return was not without incident. Uh -oh. The Wayfarer had a rough re-entry through the toxic atmosphere and was damaged during the landing. Oh. Let's start the weekly mission. I hate it when that happens. Oh, I already tried this. You um, have to pay 20 coins? Pay, let's pay 20 coins. Do I have any coins? With uh, onboard diagnostics of the action, you'll need Sparky's help to check the exterior of the Wayfarer for damage. Enter the repair codes that Sparky feeds you to fix the Wayfarer and get everything ship shape. The damage level is critical, so you'll need to hurry. Are you paying aye, attention? Yeah, this is high pressure. Memorize the fire alert codes on Jop the ISS. Jop IOT, what was the other one? Um, I, this is Jop just IOT 90. Okay, ready? Let's play. Now, yep. uh, okay. Level one, fix the life support. Okay. Systems. Okay. Q seven R U I O P O Q. Okay. Got him. Yep. Now what? <sighs> now we got a Q seven R. That was one. Yep. I. What was the other ones? K C. I O, I -O P. Where's I O P? I don't know. J O P. J O P. Sure. Oh no. Nope. Wrong. K C R. Was that one? No. Oh, you oh. killed her. 
I think I need that's to hard. work a little harder. You got to. Re- oh man, that's a lot to remember yeah. right there. Okay. Jot that down quickly. I don't know if Screenshot. I really do have a future career. I think not. I you- don't remember any of them. <laughs> Astronauts never remember those. <laughs> okay. Abort, Glad abort. you played 20, K, Will 20 coins for this one. Um, so I think that young kids that might be fun. Might have might it's really challenge. like we might all be living in space. So you should practice. Yeah. Like, you know, probably we won't, but our kids might. I don't want to live in space. Um But if they want to send somebody on a one way trip to Mars. You would go. If the medical care is good. <laughs> Uh, so is this, Do they it, have nice walking paths on Mars? I, I don't know the answer to that. But if you went, you wouldn't come back. No, that's, uh, that's why I said a one-way trip. <laughs> yeah. But that's you don't want to send a young person on a one-way trip. No, that's true. You send an old guy like me. Mm-hmm. I got nothing to lose. I can bring Twit there. Twit from Mars. I think that would be great. I'm, I'm willing. I'm ready. Sign me up, Elon. The Space Nation Iceland adventure. Yeah, I guess you can go um, on Fun. a... And this is, uh, this is NASA's, NASA... Has worked with them. Has worked with them to make it accurate. Right, accurate nice. training. Like space camp. It is space camp for... Your iPad. Your iPad, that's nice. It works better on the iPhone. Space you know, Nation Navigation. Mm-hmm. Free, but you know, there's Navigator. that kind of ads and coins that you eventually use up and have to pay real coins for. And well, this has been so much fun. It really has. Oh, it's, I got to go watch England, Colombia. Next week, we're going to talk about workflows, Siri shortcuts oh, on iOS 12. We got an email from somebody who said, I would like to know how to do that. Now, uh, the iOS 12 workflow is not complete, but Siri suggestions are in there and some workflow capabilities are in there. So we'll show you what we can do so far, but expect mm-hmm. more when it comes out this fall. Right. I'm going to try to work on some home automation. That'd be fun. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, let's get some Siri routines going. Mm-hmm. All right, we'll show you. We'll play with that next week on iOS Today. You can watch the show every Tuesday, 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern. Uh, that would be uh, yes. 1600 UTC. Is that what it says? Yeah. Uh, if you want to watch live, go to twit.tv slash live. If you do that, join us in the chat room, irc.twit.tv. Some nice people are watching with you. It's kind of like a little viewing party. But, of course, you can have your own personal viewing party at any time because we make on-demand audio and video available at iOS at the website, twit.tv slash iOS. Or search your podcast client for iOS today and download it and subscribe. That way you'll get it every week automatically. You don't even have to think about downloading it. We're on all of the major and even many of the minor podcast Mm -hmm. apps. All of them. I think there's no app that we're not on. Mm-hmm. There better not be. If, we, if there is one, email me and I'll get us on there. It's a quiet for so. It is. You know, it's a lot like the, the horn that the Swiss people play in the mountains, the flugelhorn, mm-hmm. or whatever that is. I'm not blowing it in. Ricola! Mm-hmm. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on iOS Today. It's too good of a hat to throw that hat at him.